Okay, um, so far we have uh, in, in trigonometric functions, we have covered uh, exactly what is um, sine, cosine, and tangent. And just as a bonus, we covered um, second, cosecond, and cotangent. Then we discussed the system of quadrants. I'm sure you remember quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, and how they're so significant in identifying whether trigonometric identities are positive or negative. So we covered that, and I hope you understand. Then we covered the special angles, which are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and um, in a way, 90 degrees. Okay. So um, since we have covered all this so far, I, I think it's time to dive into the next part, which is exactly how do we apply the system of quadrants, the, the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent, and the special angles into solving actual funny um, angles, so irregular angles, without exactly the use of a calculator. I mean, the first step would be to identify um, to remind you of the different quadrants and which identities are positive in each one. So we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So obviously quadrant 1, all, all are positive. In quadrant 2, only sine are positive. In quadrant 3, only tan are positive. And in quadrant 4, only cos is positive. So only these identities are, are, are positive in these specific quadrants. So for example, when we have um, a special angle such as cos 300 okay you don't ask us to solve it just about yet but we can solve it so the first step is probably to identify which quadrant 300 degrees falls in so forget about cos first we'll use that later to identify positive or negative first step is to identify which quadrant 300 degrees falls in so for that we have to understand the, the basic dynamics so at, at the start the positive x-axis is 0 degrees 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees then we form uh, after 270 degrees we form a complete revolution reaching 360 degrees and then the cycle goes on for example we can go to the next degree which is 450 and then we have what 540 and so on and on so we can we can keep going so but the only thing we need to understand right now is that one complete revolution around the axis is oh it formed a circle for me so see this is 360 degrees uh, split into four quadrants each of which constitutes 90 degrees so if we were to position 300 degrees over here 200 degrees would uh, obviously fall between the range of 270 degrees and 360 degrees okay so um, let me position that right there so for example it would probably be something like this and this angle right here if this is 300 degrees this angle right here would be 60 degrees because 360 minus 300 and since uh, a one quadrant is 90 degrees, this would probably be 30 degrees, okay? So as you can see, both of these are special angles. We'll come to that later. So now, um, so this is in quadrant four. We've already identified that 300 degrees falls in quadrant four. And in quadrant four, um, only cosine is positive, okay? And also of t cups, cosine is positive in quadrant 4. And since this is a cosine function, we can safely say that the answer will be positive. Okay. But, um, okay, now how about they, they tell us to go one step further and actually calculate the answer to this? So now the most sensible thing you would do is punch it into your calculator and uh and, and give the exact answer here but i mean that's not that's not exactly what we want to learn so fundamentally when we apply the system of quadrants the entire thing is actually quite elementary let me just show you so fundamentally when we apply the system of quadrants the entire thing is pretty elementary so um, let me show you so since we have identified that this is in quadrant four as a matter of fact and we have identified based on quadrants that the answer will be positive let's say map it out here 
okay let me just focus on um, enlarge quadrant four okay so as we've uh, correctly identified it is 360 degrees and this is 270 degrees okay this would be 60 degrees and this would be 30 degrees okay so we've it this and um this quadrant is constituted into 60 and 30 degrees and the second step into solving uh, questions like this is to break it down into a special angle so these special angles we've already memorized the ratios for them so what are these special angles let me remind you 30 degrees 45 degrees and 60 degrees so these are the the, the, the most fundamental angles so if we can identify even one of it in this quadrant we can easily draw a triangle based on it so here since uh, 60 degrees is congruent to uh, 30 and when it, when it forms 90 we can we have a choice we can either have a 60 degrees triangle or we can also make a 30 degrees triangle like this see both form right angles and we easily know the ratios for both but um, since 60 degrees is uh, is made with the um, with the with the x-axis I, I this will probably be an easier option to use so now if you will remember and I, I highly recommend that you memorize this if you would remember and I highly recommend you memorize this we have to remember the ratios for the 60 degrees uh, triangle so the shorter side the shorter side you can always remember it to be one the slightly longer side would be the square root of three and the hypotenuse is two okay so now we have identified that the reference angle the reference angle to this 300 degrees um to this 300 degrees overall angle is 60 degrees the reference angle is 60 degrees and we have identified um the, the, the three different uh, uh, opposite adjacent hypotenuse to the 60 degrees okay so now um since we're finding cos we are trying to find the adjacent of the 60 degree adjacent is one okay so let me just put one over there over the hypotenuse which is two so, and um, since it's already positive uh, we already know it's positive we don't have to play with the signs if you already identified from the quadrant system where what is positive then we don't have to adjust the signs over here okay so that will just for uh, give us a um, positive one over two so um so now you might be a bit confused as to how i quickly jump to the answer of um of, 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 of going to a 60 degree triangle so the trick is based on these special angles based on these special angles you have to find the reference angle so the reference angle it's it's best if the reference angle is either 30 45 or 60 degrees okay and and these are usually formed with the x axis so with, if if it's with the x axis you can easily form the this the reference angle and based on the reference angle you can identify the different uh, opposite adjacent hypotenuse and and then easily just do the trigonometric function based on the formulas you already know so um in a special case um, for example, in a special case such as um, sine 230, okay, I mean, uh, by looking at this, you, you might think you know the answer, but fundamentally, that is not it, okay? So, you, you see, okay, we have 0, we have 90. 180 and 270 okay 230 degrees would perhaps fall between um 180 and 270 okay so i'm going to position that somewhere here okay so if, if this is 90 degrees and 180 go travel is about um let me guess let me guess on 50 degrees so if this travels on 50 degrees so this is already 180 degrees because it's it's a straight line 180 degrees 180 degrees it uh, matches up with 50 degrees to form this triangle to form this triangle right here and since it's 50 degrees this is 40 degrees okay so we found the reference angle for this the the reference angle in this case is exactly 50 degrees theta is 50 degrees theta is the reference angle and it's 50 degrees 
but the thing is 50 degrees is not a special angle it is needed it, it's not a, it's not an element of 30 degrees 45 or 60 degrees which means that we don't have the the, the, the set ratio for it so in this case we have to obviously punch it into our calculator so since it's all um since in quad this is in quadrant three and in quadrant three only ten is positive so there will be a negative answer so you can either punch um to assign 230 straight into your calculator or you can also uh, punch a negative sign 50 degrees both of it will render the same answer in, in this case where you can't find a reference angle that is either 30, 45 or 60 degrees then you will have to use your calculator okay now just to um just to give you a trailer to something we will discuss later on discuss later on so given that but it, it's it's actually not that simple you see when we have um when we have a certain trigonometric function given and we are asked to find the other one we can't simply just draw a simple triangle and play with uh, opposite adjacent hypotenuse we can we can possibly do that if it's positive but since it's negative, the system of quadrants still plays. So since the sine of A is negative, we have to identify, okay? So since all is positive here, sine is positive here, tan is positive here, and a cos is positive here, okay? So now we want to find a quadrant where sine is negative, okay? So in both quadrant one and quadrant two, sine is positive. So this angle, is most probably either in quadrant three or quadrant four okay so i'm going to, you can choose either one you still get the same answer end of the day so i'm going to focus on it being quadrant four since the sign can be positive here it can't be in quadrant one or two because sign is positive in these two so it's probably going to be in quadrant four so i'm going to position my triangle against the x-axis okay and um since the okay just remember the formula for for sine so sine is opposite over the hypotenuse and given that the angle is acting against the x-axis so the opposite to this angle right here this this random angle which for actually you might think we have to um, find the angle first but we actually don't we can just simply we, we don't we can actually surpass that step and straight find the tan of it so let's just assume this angle here is a we don't need to know the exact number okay so the opposite will be five okay and the hypotenuse will be 13. Here you might want to factor in the sign here in negative. Okay, so um, so you would see why tan uh, you would you see why a sine function is negative here because uh, since it's in the negative y axis is negative five over thirteen. So you could put negative there. You could put a negative there, but. I would rather not because I want to help improve your understanding. So let's just keep it as plain positive values and then we'll factor in the, 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 the positive or negative sine wave term. So we have the uh, opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So to find tan, we need the adjacent also. So since it's a right angle triangle, just, just plug it into um, a Pythagoras equation. I assume this is x equal to 169 x square is 169 minus 25 x square would be 144 so x is 12 so we put 12 over there okay so now we have all three parts of this triangle here this, this reference triangle that we have somehow created okay now we're trying to find the tan of a so tan is op obviously the opposite over the adjacent okay so the first thing we need to identify is since this is in we, we chose quadrant four okay so in quadrant four in quadrant four is tan positive or negative so since only cos can be positive here tan is negative in the in this quadrant 
So since 10 is negative, so let me just put a preliminary negative there before we calculate. So since what was the opposite here? The opposite is 5. Okay, and the adjacent is 12. So to say, so this will be minus 5 over 12. Hmm. So now if they specify that they want you to calculate in, in a specific quadrant, then you, you go ahead with that. But most of the time, you can choose which quadrant you want to go with. Okay, um, thank you guys.